episode 86. So this one was kind of a surprise for all of us, but uh, Michael Plumides uh, uh, sent me a message saying, hey, uh, Christine McCorkendale is staying with us on, our, on her way over to visit some family or on her way back, I think. So um, so he said, do you want to do a, a podcast? It's like, yeah, that sounds great. You know, we've been talking with her off and on for a couple of years about arranging a podcast and uh it hadn't worked out so um apologies in advance the audio quality is not super great uh he couldn't get his skype working so we called his cell phone and he put it on speakerphone um but yeah so this is episode 86 of the clive barker podcast with christine mccorkendale and uh, Michael Plumides. Uh, Christine McCorkendale, of course, was Shuna Sassy on Nightbreed. Oh, and also, this is the first time that Rob Ridenauer, our, uh, our contributor for the site, um, has, has come on the podcast as well. Uh, Jose was on vacation. So this is episode 86 with uh, Christine McCorkendale and Michael Plumides and uh, and uh, Rob Ridenauer, you're joining us today. Um, yeah. And Jose is out on uh, on his vacation. Yeah, I hope he's having a good time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds like he went uh, looked at some pictures on. Yeah, this, yeah. This, the place he went to looked pretty nice, but yeah, uh, it looked pretty awesome. We miss you. We miss you, Jose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, um, and this was a story that you had posted on the on the site, but uh, there's a stage play of Revelations uh, in in Los Angeles, and it's at the Blank Theater in Hollywood on January 26th. Yeah, some kind of workshop yeah. that they're doing, the evolution of a play or something. Well, that's that pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, um, Revelations is this is been a- adapted because it wasn't uh, that that's not a play that Clive Barker wrote it's just based on the short story yeah yeah um yeah I, it's funny actually that reminds me when we were at at um at Clive Barker's studio there was a a book that said in Japanese uh ghost motel so that's the yeah. ja- that's the Japanese name for revelations oh nice <laughs> Yeah, I, I, when we uh, have extra time to talk, maybe I'd love to ask you some questions about that experience. Going oh yeah, on. yeah, it was fun. The uh, y'all the also was some news on the uh, Leviathan, the story of Hellraiser and Hellbound Hellraiser Two. News. Oh yeah, what's that? It was on Fangoria. They did an interview with the uh, oh producer, right, produ- right producer and the director. It looks uh, Gary now, Smart. Is that, now is that going to be like a a limited edition thing, or is that going to be like released through? Where everybody can get it. Yeah, uh, they're trying. Yeah, they're they're they they want to get they're they're working um working on on trying to get a distributor. And the last I heard, I think they had found somebody or they were in talks with somebody about actually doing distribution. Um, you know, if you if you paid bought it in the Kickstarter at a certain level, you would actually get a physical copy of it too. Um, but I think uh, see, that, I never got yeah. To- I wanted to do that. I wanted to, you know, help with the Kickstarter. I just didn't have the money at the time. And when I yeah. did, it was over. Oh, yeah. Well, and being involved in this podcast, there are so many Kickstarters that the different people are involved in and stuff. And it's hard to, it's hard to, uh, to, to kick in on all of them. I did, a, I did a contribute to the Imaginer. Oh, yeah. The Imaginer 2 book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you get the first yeah. one? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, okay. I do not have that one. Okay. I've, uh, I'm trying to collect as much Clyde Barker as I can right now, books yeah. and novels especially, because I'm reading Everville at the moment, about halfway through that. Oh, the cool. Next, the next is going to be a Magica, because if they're doing a TV show of that, I'd like to That's a good point. Know, know, know what I'm getting myself into. I, I think it'll probably be at least maybe a couple of years before they get going on that. So yeah, that'll give me plenty yeah. of time. To read. Yeah, but it's oh. a big book. 
Uh, my, my, I've read Magicka maybe three times, and my my memory of it is that it's uh, it's hard to follow at first because there are so many. It start it goes to from the point of view of so many different characters, and it takes a long time to figure out how they all relate to each other. I like how he does that in his writing too, though he yeah. goes from different characters because it's kind of like starting a new journey. Yeah. With each uh, character. Yeah, you can't always tell exactly who the main character is. He does that in Everbull in the yeah. Great Secret Show. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Yeah, I mean, at one point, it's from the point of view of the, the League of Virgins in the Great and Secret Show, and it's like, obviously, they're not main characters. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. But I gotta, I've got to get to Weave World. I've got a copy of that. Uh, just a lot of Clyde Barker right now. <laughs> just i gotta, just got to get catch up, though. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Also, I was going to say about this: uh, if this uh, documentary is successful, they're thinking about doing uh, more documentaries on the rest of them. Yeah, I, I, that's right. I had read that. And if so that that would be, be good. <clears throat> that'd be interesting. Well, it, it, it'd be a lot of what went wrong, or why why was this choice made, or why was this movie made. It's like seven and eight were made in the same year, like back to back. That's right. I do yeah. remember that. But they, but they yeah. didn't come out for the longest time. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I think they held. Didn't they hold one back for a while? Maybe yeah, it was eight, like eight. I think yeah. they held eight back for a while or something. They shot. Yeah, you're right. I'm remembering the Fangoria reports for those. Uh, Deader. Yeah. Shot first, then then Hell World. Yeah. But they were shot back in like 2002 and 2003 and didn't come out until 2007 and or you, something. You, I, you would never know that they're the same director from looking at those two movies because they're so different from each other. Yeah. And they I just, even uh, have different mythology, different Hellraiser like mythology between those two movies. It's really strange. You'd think yeah, at I, least the same director would want to keep the same consistent you know consistency between his movies uh that would be rick boda am i correct yeah right 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 i think the i think the best one he did a trilogy of he did hell seeker yeah. hell debtor and hell world i think yeah. the best one he probably the best one he did was hell seeker yeah There's... i'm not a big fan i'm not a big fan of those direct <laughs> video movies no no me either yeah i, I mean especially inferno i uh, Ferno, I mean, those guys have gone on mm-hmm. to some great stuff. I like a lot of the Scott Dickerson stuff as mm. he's got, you know, a better career going. But that, I don't, you might want to edit this out. Uh, no, that's fine. I just uh, think he didn't get Hellraiser at all. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Pinhead doesn't, Pinhead doesn't talk about mm-hmm. people and how they should live yeah. their lives. And just, yeah. Preach, well, preach and there, the, there's so much of, um, there, there's the, it, it, on these direct-to-video movies. There's so much of of um, Jacob's Ladder, you know, in 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 all of them, where it's like people are in hell and they don't realize they're in hell. And all they see all this weird stuff with demons and they they don't understand it. And it's like, oh, am I hallucinating or is this real? Am I awake or am I dreaming? Yeah, I just got I just really got on my nerves. Yeah, I mean, it just it's what like, happened to the themes of pleasure and pain and yeah. You know, I mean, I just it was very frustrating. I right, mean, and the hell of Hellraiser is not what they're, I don't know, it's just not It's not the same thing as what they're trying to say. Well, I, hopefully, I'm hoping with this remake it'll, you know, you know, yeah. bring it back to some, you know, kind of glory, but yeah. we'll see. Maybe, and then, and then, um, and then Scarlet Gospels, if that's a, you know, if that's filmable. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, maybe. Oh, yeah. Any Harry Demore is good. Harry Demore. Yeah, well, and it would be awesome to see a movie of of Scarlet Gospels with Scott Bakula. Yeah, he could. I mean, he could still do it. I bet he would oh, still do yeah. it too. Yeah, I think so. Okay, at this point, we called in uh, Michael Plumides and Christine McCorkendale. Say hello. 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 Hey, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, how are we? Can you hear us? Yeah, it's it's a little um, a little muffly, I guess, but it sounds pretty good. A little muffly. Yeah, yeah. or maybe a little echoey. Oh, uh, oh, that's because we're in here in the kitchen. Do, do oh, okay. you want to go? You want me to go somewhere where the soft surfaces are? Uh, maybe that'd help a little bit. 
Yeah, that's gonna be the stupidest. Because it is right. It's for. It's, it's kind of like you can tell when your friend's taking a shit when he's talking to you because you can, you can, you know, hear the echo in the bathroom. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like when you're you're free talking to so you right. say, "Hey, man, what's going on?" You know, whatever. And then then the whole then the uh, then the, the the acoustics change in the in the conversation. You know, it's like right. you can tell they're in the right. bathroom stall. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> We're not going yet, are we, or are we? Uh, well, I mean, I'll edit that part out. But yeah. You don't have to edit anything. Just go ahead. I mean, we, you know, we, uh, we're not ready to G, are we? No. No, not at all. Yeah. No. We're not, we're not on air. Who's that Ridenauer character? Uh, Robert, Michael Ridenauer. That's who I am. No, I'm, I'm saying, aren't you in North Carolina or something? Yes, I am. I see that you're in North Carolina, too. Yes, I am. I'm just over here uh, off of Carmel Road in South, South Charlotte, about two miles from South Park. Yeah, well, that's pretty cool. Small world. I did not really know that until I saw that when I looked up your page today on Facebook. <laughs> right, right. Well, it's good. it's good to have Southerners to represent because we got a few <laughs> yeah. of them. Chris, Christina yeah. McCorkendale here with me as a South. She's actually, well, now, what part of North Carolina are you originally from? I'm from the Winston-Salem. Oh, I was from Winston-Salem. I don't yeah. know if that's, you know, she's got family in Winston. She's got family uh, in eastern North Carolina as well. Wow. So, anyway, yeah. Do you, so, uh, what are we going to talk about? Where's that Mr. Jose? Uh, oh, Jose's not even with us, huh? No, no, he's not. No, he's uh, he's in Yosemite, I guess. What's um, he doing? Is he just on vacation with the wife here? Well, what is that? Exactly, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We were all just sitting around, and, and Christina agreed with me uh, that, that Jose is a handsome fella. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, agree I mean, not you. like you know, like I'm like you know, you know, hot for him or anything, but he's a handsome fellow. He, <laughs> he, he, he makes he makes makes a nice Midian poster boy. All right, well, the, we'll, we'll pass that I'm along. Sure, yeah, I'm sure he'll love to hear that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. I, I suppose I'm as far uh, as far away from being a southerner as possible. Well, no, but you're not, uh, Ryan. You're not from Alaska, though. Where are you? I mean, how did you get up there? No, I grew, I grew up in uh, Washington State. Oh, okay. Well, that's not too far. Not I mean, too far. Not too far, but still an hour difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. We get our own time zone. Yeah, I saw <laughs> something about. I don't know. Did you post that about? Um, about the uh, wind turbine, the, the, oh, the yeah. floating wind turbine. Yeah, that's pretty cool. There's a lot of houses up here that are off the grid, so that'll be wow. That'll be that's really far handy. out, you know. Yeah. I mean, that looks so you know futuristic. I kind of like you know. I was saying, you <laughs> yeah. know what? And there's still people there living in log cabins, and you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. Like, with no heating oil or anything, you know. There's people like you know, you ever see those guys being put by reindeer up there? You know the ones with the uh, they got the, uh, the 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 mobile homes that are on these pontoons. You seeing this? But well, that's Inuit. It's not really in Alaska. Oh, okay. You know. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Wow. No, I haven't seen that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a trip. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know that you haven't seen it. That's something you know that's like uh, you know on the other side. Anyway. Yeah. We're going to let Chris, uh, you got any questions from uh, Ms. McCorkendale? I'm going to yeah. turn the phone number to her. All right. Well, so this is episode 86 of the Clive Barker podcast and uh, uh, Christine McCorkendale. So um, our, our our listeners would know you, of course, from uh, as Shuna Sassy and Nightbreed. Um, so how when you when you started on Nightbreed, were you living in, in uh, England at the time? Yes, I was. I was living in London and uh, studying physical theater with David Glass. Oh, wow. Okay. Who did the, choreo- the movement choreography on the film. And uh, and when you got the job uh, with Nightbreed, was it always going to be that character? Did they design a character f- uh, for you after you'd already been hired? No, no, no. The character had already been designed mm-hmm. and... Uh, David Glass thought of of me as a good match for the character because he, you know, I'd been taking his classes and working with him, and he was familiar with with my movement and my range. Okay. So um, he took me to meet uh, Clive Barker, and Clive Barker showed me drawings and paintings of Shuna Sassy, 
and we talked about, you know, what the character was like, what her movement qualities were like, and and what kind, what was going to be expected of me physically. It was it was mainly a very it was a physical role. I mean, I don't call myself an actress. Um, I was a dancer, and then I was into physical theater for a while before I completely left show business. What was the process like of putting all that uh, all that makeup and costume on? Oh, that was the <laughs> hardest thing. Um, I mean, basically, I had to like be up at three in the morning. Um, you picked up. Tell by me somewhere car. You're, in a, you're not a morning uh, person as well. You're not a morning person. I'm not a morning person. <laughs> so I no, I'm story. like I'm. I'm just rolling over at three or four in the morning. Oh no, wow! No, I'm so not a morning person. Um, I was, so I was living in Brixton at the time, and so it was like probably a good hour's ride out to uh, God. Was it Pinewood? Pinewood mm-hmm. Studio. Yeah, it was Pinewood. So you know. Um, so they'd get me there around 4 or 4.30 in the morning, and Mark Coulier was there, and uh, he was great to work with. You know, he did the makeup for Meryl Streep on, uh, what was it called, Julia? No, no, no. It was the Margaret Thatcher movie. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Same guy. Very talented. So anyway, yeah, I was just I had to sit in that chair for between seven and eight hours. Did you fall asleep? That- uh, I tried to doze for the first couple of hours, and then after they put the headdress on, I couldn't lean back anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was like torture. It was torture. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, yeah. What everybody was, says about makeup roles, a lot of yeah. those roles are pretty, you know. You I was going to put that stuff on. Yeah. Interject a funny story here. Um, uh, I know uh, Connor McCullough, who was the. Uh, uh, one first season of Face Off, he did some some a little bit of work for me, but um, uh, gosh, I forgot what I was just saying. Oh well, oh, I'll have the makeup. <laughs> uh, he, he so he did. Uh, <laughs> what is it's distracting me? Going, oh god, here it comes. What are you going to say now? Okay, so stop saying that. I lose my concentration. Stay on topic, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, Connor McCullough, he uh, put Martin Lawrence in a fat suit. And uh, uh-huh. he said that what Martin Lawrence used to do was he would watch uh, countless episodes of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's how he got through. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't get to watch anything. This was before we had tablets and Wi-Fi. Oh, man. You know? Yeah, so I, I couldn't even, like, play Boggle or look at Facebook on my phone. This was oh. this was in the days when people, like, had to just sit and be bored. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want you all to know that. Yeah. It was a time before Wi-Fi. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's hard to remember that now. Yeah, yeah it is. What did they use to remove the makeup? The make- I don't remember because it was like by that time, I, it was. Is it like gasoline kind of smelling stuff? No, I don't. Or the I, pond's cold we would it. just pull it off, I think. Mm. I don't. It could have been Vaseline. It could have been Vaseline. Pulled it off. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Maybe eight. I think I worked six days, a total of six or seven days mm-hmm. over a period of two weeks. Okay. And what was it like to work with Clive Barker? Um, it was great. It was like working with a big, happy kid, a very <laughs> creative. <laughs> it was just a lot of fun, yeah. And having seen more of the like the footage from the director's cut, um, I'm I'm more and more impressed with how you know because he got some good movement out of me and of everyone else. I mean he you know he did a good job. So yeah, and we got to great. we got to see for the first time uh, those uh, test test screening of the of the dream sequence with you and the other uh, the other actors without yeah. costumes. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so you're yeah. You're, you're recognizable there. Yeah. Um, so. So that's me in in uh, rehearsal gear, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I I saw that for the first time a couple of weeks ago. And have leg warmers? I know. I don't think so. <laughs> but 
<laughs> you know, it was like, wow, this is the first footage of myself on film, like, without a lot of makeup or anything that I really liked, you know? It's like, and it, you know, it was just, it was really cool to be able to see myself and marvel at how skinny and limber I was. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, so you've moved out of that now and you're into the I, IT department at Harvard Business School, right? What's that? Yep. Um, I work uh, in executive education, and I support our admin staff um, who, you know, I, I support the software that our admin staff use and also the, that our participants use. But um, what, was there... it's, it's a very demanding job, and, and I think my IT days are drawing to a close. Oh, really? Soon. I, I think I've had enough. Yeah. What was um, so? What what made you switch from uh, choreography to uh, to to IT? Well, I wasn't. I was never a choreographer. I was a dancer, mm-hmm. and you know, dancers have a very short career span. Very few dancers go beyond thirty. Mm. Uh, you know, for me. I think it ended a little early because I had a broken bone in one of my feet, which was, and I actually broke a a bone in my foot from working on a student film. It took a while to diagnose. It was very subtle, but it was there. And, and I just think after a while, it's like, you you just, it just, your body starts to hurt. And, um, and I was just getting bored and I, I went back to school. I studied yoga. So, you know, I supported myself. By teaching yoga and 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 doing like sort of secretarial work in in offices, uh, temp temp office stuff, and teaching yoga while I went back to school. Well, and one another uh, another actor on Nightbreed, uh, Catherine Chevalier, uh, teaches body movement in in London. I've heard, I've heard, yeah. yeah. She was a really nice uh, nice lady. I have a funny story about her. Oh um, yeah. Because the, the the whole time I was, like, on set, like, none of the other cast members met me as myself. I was always in full makeup, um, including Catherine. Mm. So I think it was maybe a few months, oh, maybe a year, you know, it could be a year later. I was at a friend's party, and it was, it, there were a lot of people standing around outside, and I, I recognized her. But, you know, she was talking in a group of people. She was at this party. And so I just kind of hovered around her and started just kind of flitting around her and, and, and being playful and saying, I know you. you. You and I have hung out and talked, but you don't know who I am. And the sound of my voice, it kind of like, it was like, <laughs> oh, you sound familiar. Who are you? <laughs> yeah. so, I had a lot of fun with her, and, and I can't remember if she guessed who I was. I think I gave her his, you know, we worked on a film together, and, you know. But, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. She didn't know who I was for oh, a long awesome. time. Oh, that's awesome. So speaking of, of your voice, is that is that your voice saying, I dreamt him, or was that, uh, was that dubbed in later? Good question. Um, I remember speaking the line. Mm-hmm. I certainly spoke it more than once. There was more than one tank. Take, uh, sorry, take. Um, but when I hear it, and I think, wow, is that my voice? Um, it sounds very British, and it sounds like it was treated. Mm. So it could be my – and I did sound much more British when I lived there, and I probably made a point of, you know, I mean, I would have said it. I might have said it like that because I had a semi-British accent because mm. I lived there for 40 years. Mm-hmm. But, and, but the way it sounds, it, it, it's like – if that's my voice, they, they treated it in some way. So I don't know if that's really me or not. It could an effect. Yeah. So no, if that's me or not, I wish okay. I knew. And that and that line, um, that that line is really interesting because it kind of puts this importance on on uh, a relationship between Shunasasi and and uh, Cabal and and um, yeah. And that that's that says that there's something it kind of hints at something important that doesn't doesn't come back later on did did uh, he did Clive Barker give you any any reason or any history or backstory about why why you said that or why that why you guys dreamed about each other no uh, never got that i heard rumors of a sequel 
yeah. where something happens with Cabal and Shuna Sassy. Okay. But, you know, after the theatrical re- release, I think there, you know, I think rumors of a sequel kind of went away. Yeah. And speaking yeah. of kind of sexy relationships, <laughs> not, and I wanted, to, I wanted to ask her, just and I know that uh, you're, you probably want to know this too, uh, did she, they didn't actually uh, with you and Pelican. Uh-huh. That was originally just shot for the credits, and there wasn't any lines in that or anything. Or um, we, there were lines um, that I spoke when I walked through a curtain of snakes, which mm-hmm. unfortunately has not survived. You know, it's not seen yeah. the light of day. Yeah, they don't have any sound for any of that part. Yeah, I know. I know, and. Um, I mean, you can see us after we've walked through the curtain, but, when, you know, there are no lines. But I did say a line, you know, um, at the time, and I don't remember what it was. Oh, I wish okay. I'd say it um, <laughs> and, and I think, honestly, I think I was so sleep-deprived. I, like, I've seen some footage of the love scene, but, um, but I have no recollection of it. And it's like I know he was a gorgeous man. Was it Oliver Parker? Parker, yeah. Yeah, yeah, gorgeous guy. I can't believe I did a love scene with this guy, and I hardly remember any of it. But <laughs> that having to get, wake up at three in the morning uh, will do to you. Oh gosh, but yeah. The, the, the love scene was. It took place with me standing over him on this bed, like he's lying on a bed, being covered in snakes. And I'm standing around. I'm just writhing over him. I don't remember any speaking. I do remember that we had to do this several times. And uh, every, at every cut, we had to uh, run after the snakes. And we all had to chip in and grab those snakes and send them back. <laughs> yeah, you get, you get to see some of that. In, uh, <laughs> uh-huh? Sorry. You get to see some of that in the behind-the-scenes footage on that they are chasing yeah. the snakes. <laughs> uh, well, you know what? I haven't even seen the whole bit of that that whole thing so it took me um, like check a, it out. it's pretty funny it took me like a week to watch all of the features and stuff yeah it's a lot you can't yeah. do it in one night yeah so, that's for sure okay so i have that to look forward to that's <laughs> yeah. great yeah, yeah go I, remember, it out. I, I don't know how excited cliff mcmillan was when he first found that footage oh yeah and he was excited it, about it and how how he wanted to kind of wanted to put it in but i guess you know the thing is there's a lot of the stuff I mean, they'll come with no sound, yeah. uh, and, and, and then they're going to go back and A B R everything. And he so. told us in our in an interview with us that uh, that that was getting restored in the movie, so we got a lot of people's hopes up about that about that I scene. That podcast, yeah. But you know, no, no big deal. I mean, it, and I think you know, I mean. Uh, uh, I mean, how difficult would it have been to really go back and fix the audio? All you do is use uh, you know, Danny Elkin soundtrack. You put that yeah. over, and you get some... Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah, well, and they had... I think they had decided that that was only meant for the credit sequence, and they couldn't figure out where, you know, or the oh. opening dream sequence or the opening credits sco- that crawl, and they couldn't figure out where in the movie it would go. And I thought that it would go in the scene when Laurie and Boone are, are going across the bridge and trying to yeah, get, out, it, get out of Midian. That's how it's written in the script. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Do you have so a copy I thought of maybe it was... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Do you have a copy of the script? Yeah, I have the second draft. Yeah. Nice. So, um... Is that a, a PDF? You, yeah, I think it does exist in PDF. There was one point where somebody had posted it on Occupy Mini, and I think we could get it for you. <laughs> nice. So, how many pages were scripts in? Do you have any idea how many that was? Oh, how many pages? No. How many pages is the script? Two hundred twenty, hundred thirty. Here, I've got them loaded up real fast. Okay. So, uh, Christine, did you save anything back from Nightbreed, uh, or? Did you kind of just say I'm moving on and? Did I save anything? Yeah. Did you? Do you have any? Uh, do you have any souvenirs from I that? Did. From your I time? I, well, I saved. I've got two or three Polaroids that were taken with me in uh, the Shuna Sassy costume, having a beer with <laughs> Mark. With Mark and I think Little John. Oh wow! 
So that was that was hilarious. And um, and I have I had the headpiece, the mask. I had the oh, mask, original. the original mask. Holy. It was lots of didn't get used. They gave it to me. I stored it for years and years and years in a trunk with my Halloween gear. And it just rotted. It just started uh, rotting. And I hated to do it, but I didn't, you know, I didn't know how to save it or preserve it. And I finally threw it away. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's too bad. That really stinks. Yeah, but those things are only, they're only meant to last, survive for the movie. They're not, yeah, that's yeah. too bad. Exactly. Um, it's amazing that it lasted as long as it did. Yeah. Um, I, you know, honestly, if I'd known that, that, Stuff that I'd be talking to you today and going to these conventions, mm-hmm. yeah, which I would have come out. I would have found a way to preserve it because I could probably have made a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and that's that was another thing I wanted to ask you too. How how have you liked this resurgence in in Nightbreed? Uh, okay. You know, a Nightbreed fandom and and the convention circuit and all of that. Well, it's just really new experience and quite a change from Harvard Business School, as you can imagine. Um, yeah. It's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. Um, you know, I can't say that I'm 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 rich yet or paid off my house, but <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, it it it's been fun. I remember I, one time I was at a convention one time and I was in line for. Um, for oh gosh, his name I'm blanking on his name, Freddy Krueger. Uh, Robert England. Robert England. Yeah, England. and somebody in that line was saying that he made something like twenty thousand dollars a day, you know, from autographs at those conventions. Well, the big stars, I don't know that even that sounds like a lot, but I've I've seen people lining up for the big stars, like at the at Dragon Con. Um, James Marsters was across the hall from me, the guy who played. <laughs> in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and people were lined up for hours to, to get his crap. Yeah, you, you would never imagine how many people line up to Norman Reedus. Oh, man, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I was in the line for, in Texas. I went. It was in a line for Roger Corman, and that, that one went, like, around and around and outdoors. And... Here, I'll, I'll tell you something might blow your mind at these conventions. Zach Bagans from Ghost Adventures. You got moms and daughters wrapped around buildings. <laughs> yeah, I haven't had any waiting lines like that yet, but, you know, maybe five people at a time waiting, um, but no more than that. Oh, like a freak show over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he, 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 he always wants to know what I'm doing and, and, uh, and wants to get on the keyboard and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> so... Sorry, sorry, Michael and Anna are cracking me up here. Um, so, yeah, Michael has said that I should make an announcement about my pottery. I have just started selling my pottery at the convention. Oh, really? Um, this, this, is, this is my antidote to Harvard Business School and IT. It's like getting my hands in wet clay and on a wheel and and it's keeping me sane. Wow, I, so, I would think if there's something that could be the the opposite of IT, maybe that would be it. It is. Yeah. It's wonderful. That's great. It really is. It's so good, analog, yeah. dude. It's so analog. Yeah. yeah. What's far out is that she may be at Madame Monster Party this year, maybe. Uh, oh really? So kind of comes from her. And I am working on a design of for uh, Nightbreed mugs and tankards. <laughs> really? Like, big enough to drink a beer out of. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. I'm, That's I'm, cool. I'm, I'm working I'd love on to get one of those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you, Do you have a website address that we could put on the on the I blog post? I have a domain, but I have not done anything with the website yet. Oh, it's okay. pathetic. Because the last thing I want to do when I come home is get online and and code a, a website and it's it's there. But sassyceramics.com, you may even get an error message, but it's sa- that's pretty cute. It will be yeah. Shoot a sassy. So it's sassyceramics.com. We could take some pictures and we could put it on Occupy Media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, please do. Sassy Ceramics. So s a s s i ceramics.com. Yeah. That's right. Okay. And I may start selling things on Etsy soon. Okay. Okay, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, since, since I'm procrastinating so badly <laughs> about site, you know, I may do that. Yeah. Uh, but I do want to create an online store, and, you know, I can only carry so much to the conventions. But, you know, and the stuff that I've sold at the conventions is, like, not even horror-themed. It's just regular. Yeah. It's just because when I'm not, when I'm not, you know, like, talking about Nightbreed and Shunasassi, I'm, I'm probably, or at, you know, doing IT at Harvard Business School, I'm probably at the beach surfing or windsurfing because that's oh, what that's I really cool. want. <laughs> that's cool yeah wow yeah so, so a lot of my stuff is beach colors you know well that's cool yeah. yeah i definitely am interested to see those great yeah okay bye uh, is that, is that, are we good Ryan? um yeah yeah um yeah thank you so much for for uh for agreeing to to talk with us what's next for occupy million what you guys got to cut up your sleeve well, um, we're trying, we're, we're working on trying to redo the, cause the website's been down for a while, you know, we don't own that. So we're trying, working on trying to get that back up again. Um, Oh, well, I forgot about that. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. you know, uh, we're, tr- so we're working on that and, and then, um, and then I guess really trying to, uh, we want to hang in there until until there's a, a, a European release of Nightbreed because if we took down Occupy Media now, people would people would be upset. You know, it's kind of like, oh yeah, yeah you got oh, you got what you wanted, have... so you're you know now you're giving up on us. No, we still have the Clive Barker cast page. I was talking about that page. I didn't know about Occupy Media. How long has Occupy Media oh. been shut down? That's probably the last time I've looked. Oh, uh, it's been a few months. Yeah. It's been, it's been like maybe three, four months, something like that. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Uh, we want to thank you for having us on and, uh, Thanks for coming on. Yeah. And thank you very much. Anything you want to add? Um, no, just, you know, just buy the director's cut. It's so much better than the that theatrical release. And oh, look yeah. out for sassy, uh, for sassyceramics.com. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I ended up getting the credit on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was going to no, say, you were asking about... Uh, no, the funny thing about that is I, the reason I say that is is because we originally told that no more credits were going to be added at the end, that they weren't going to. So I was going, I can bust them ass for nothing. I ain't going to get a credit on the thing or whatever. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but but that's not really where I, where I was going from. So I was really pleasantly surprised when somebody when when Jose sent me a a, a still of the card. Yeah, yeah, that's Mark pretty Miller cool. Producer, and then, and then uh, Andrew Furtado, and then, and, and, and then uh, us, and, and uh, Doug Bradley, whatever. But I mean, I thought it was really, really, it was just a huge bonus because you get treated like a second class citizen until your name's on something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. That was great. Right. So, that was pretty cool. It, it ended up getting on there. So, so, that, so that was it. So, what's happening and, ne- next for yeah, Ghost, you, Ghost Trek? Oh, what? We're talking about Ghost Trek? Yeah, no, I was wondering, uh, yeah, what's what's happening next for that? Well, uh, actually, I'm, I'm still waiting for my finances, fi- the financing to come in on the feature. Oh, okay. Um, but but uh, we've got two episodes now mm-hmm. that we've done. One's 22 minutes and another one's 31 minutes. They're both available for, uh, and if you've got Chromecast or if you've got a smart TV, it's great to watch it on your TV. Uh, that's at youtube.com backslash ghost track TV. If you want to go and learn all about the characters and get a little bit of background on them, that's at ghost track TV.com. And we're also on Facebook and Twitter and, uh, and that's pretty much, oh, uh, and you know, the, the, the thing is, is to sell stuff and does, and bird dog vintage does really well on, uh, what's the, what's the thing and Instagram. Oh. Instagram is the wave of the future yeah. because, yeah, to sell your stuff when you're selling your really? items online. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yes. Yes. And and that's what we were saying. She she sells a lot more stuff on Instagram than she does on Etsy or any of these others. Yeah. 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 I wonder if that's true for real estate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know. 
Just so hopefully you're not living off of potatoes up there with the ground frozen and trying to get the potato. <laughs> like the, the Irish, the, you know. Like the, yeah, that would like be pretty the, horrible. Imagination. I do. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's, I'm glad to see Chris and I, we became friends. We we actually were on the panel together at uh, Dragon Con. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was a video and, and, on that at YouTube. Uh, yeah, that was the one where they didn't have a name tag, didn't have a name plate for me, and I hand wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I misspelled my name on the I misspelled my name on the Oh, man. I put, you know, like when you see like how Jethro Bodine writes a sign, you know, and oh, yeah, 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 yeah. E is backwards, you know. <laughs> 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 yeah, I did that. That's how I did my. And yeah, Nicholas was there. Nicholas was there, and uh, and 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 actually Russell was there, mm-hmm. and Chris, and and uh, and De- and and uh, she- and she- and, De- and Shepherd. Yeah, that's Craig awesome. Shepherd. Craig Shepherd. Craig Shepherd told the funniest story about David Cronenberg. I mean, I thought it was hilarious. Shall I repeat this story or just very quickly? I sure, sure, yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. He says that, that Cronenberg kept inviting him out you know, to go and have lunch, you know, every day, you know, after they were both cast. And so Cronenberg would go, and then he would just sit. Cronenberg would sit across from Shepherd and say nothing, you know, like throughout the entire meal. And they were just That's sitting in there. And so, yeah, I don't, and, 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 and the way he was describing it, I was wondering if he was trying to somehow maybe, you know, you know, that, that Boone is his, is, is his nemesis and, <laughs> or, you know, he's trying to size him up somehow or whatever. But anyway, so Shepard Smith, he's sitting there and he goes, he, he says, yeah, he's been uh, doing, doing, you know, going to something about uh, going to different places. He's been going to, you know, uh, where was he going? He was going. He to was, he was studying like spirituality and philosophy and stuff. And he yeah. and and I think he at some point he asked Cronenberg what he believed in. No, he, I think this is what it was. He goes, well, because because I'm trying to, to find. You know, some people are trying to find their pathway to God. To find and meaning. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then uh, Cronenberg goes, ah, don't be silly. There is no God. Yeah, <laughs> there is no God. <laughs> don't be silly. There is no God. <laughs> I think that's on the blue. I think that's on the blue ray special. Oh, oh, what if uh, they just say an bad. idealistic something? <laughs> How nice. Yeah. How old was Shepard? How old was Shepard? Oh, four. 20 something. I, I, don't, uh, know. I don't know. So, um, Shepard looked great. That guy, you know, I mean. You know, I mean, it, it looks good, but it's not like in a, you know, how... He's aged gracefully. Yeah. He's still a hottie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Char- Charles Hayden had a similar story um, at the at the Los Angeles screening of the of the director's cut. He said that yeah. he, he would go, he would go uh, have lunches with, with Cronenberg, and they would just sit there and not say anything. And then one day he said, uh, do you think a typewriter could take a shit? <laughs> Because he, 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 he was working on Naked Lunch at the time. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> that was a great film. Yeah. Was that really Peter good. Weller? Peter Weller. I, yeah. 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 Right. Great, great book, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, the thing is, probably as far as cult movies go, you know, I mean, I'm, Blue Velvet is probably one of his, my favorite. That was a film here in North Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's it's not a great film. I had an agent uh, back when I did some, like, just like little piddly stuff, uh, in commercials and stuff. And she was at the meeting in Laurenburg. North Carolina, she was at the city council meeting when they licensed the name to use the name Laurenburg uh-huh. in Blue Velvet. Oh, wow. I know why I'm talking about that. That was just kind of like a kind of... That's cool. Out. All right, well, listen. Done yet? Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right, All right. we're going to stop. Okay, well, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank and, you. Uh, hey, have a good trip back. Happy. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, ha- happy yeah, Thanksgiving. I hope had a good one. <laughs> Thank you. A lot of turkey. Okay. okay. Have a good All day. Right. Thank you. Okay, bye. 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 bye.
You can reach us on the web at www.cliffebarkercast.com. Leave us a review on iTunes. We're on Podomatic, Xbox Music Store, TuneIn Radio, Stitcher, Double Twist, BlackBerry, and Pocket Cast. Like our page on Facebook and join the Occupy Median group. On Twitter, we're at BarkerCast and at Occupy Median. The forum is www.clivebarkerfans.com slash forum. Opening theme by Colin Lakativa. <laughs>